What's up everybody and welcome to my newest tutorial on Substance Painter. In this tutorial I would like to basically introduce you guys to uh, Substance Painter. All, the, all of you who haven't used this application in the past, who haven't used Substance Painter at all, uh, all the newbies, all the intermediates, you'll be basically learning how to import meshes, uh, how to uh, add layers, add textures, how to auto UV unwrap, uh, how to bring in your meshes with UDIMs, how to export textures, how to use the height deformation, how to export meshes out of Substance Painter directly if you're interested in doing some uh, interest, you know, getting some interesting, scul interesting sculpts with textures. Uh, I'm going to show you basically um, how the layer stack works, how the masks work, and basically what is the, you know, what's the methodology around Substance Painter and what makes it so great. Uh, I'm going to use this uh, mesh that I've got off of uh, Sketchfab, which is a free mesh. Um, you guys can get it through the Substance Launcher if you wish to. Uh, uh, to give credit to the author, you can find his link in the description. You guys, if you guys want his uh, model, just uh, go there and download it. Just uh, make sure you press a like and a comment on his uh, model. I think that would be greatly appreciated by him. And if you wish to support my channel and support me, you guys can find the link in the description where you can basically buy me a beer if you would like. So with no more delays, let's begin! Okay, so we're now in Substance Painter. We've just started our uh, new document. I've just opened the uh, Jade Toad, which is an uh, you know an open sample. You can just open as a sample. Uh, basically, if you go in here, you just select Jade Toad, and we'll load a model for you. The only reason why I'm doing this is because I want to show you guys the interface of how to use Substance Painter. So basically, what you're in here uh, in the in the main um, screen. You can actually use, you know, press Alt on the keyboard and then just with the left click, you can just navigate the interface like that. Uh, you know, you can just drag around, you can rotate the, the uh, on, on the model. You can also press Control and Alt at the same time. And then when you uh, left click, you can just uh, drag around, you know, just move the model around the scene so you can see it from different angles. If you hold shift and then you press right uh, click and you drag around then you can change the lightning where it's coming from so you can uh, have a different look at your model just be um, you know just be aware that you can't do this on the bottom uh, or the top it's just the light just goes around the uh, model basically so that's you know that's the basic sort of function you can expect the um, zoom you know to work just like in uh, normal apps just uh, by using the scroll wheel so that's that's fine uh, so as I said, if you do a alt and right click and you drag along, you can zoom again, just like that as well. And then basically the, the, that's the, those are the navigation, the basic navigation keys. And that's what you will need to just go around the scene basically. Um, so and now on the left side in here, you can see a lot of basically the, of elements like, um, the, you've got the brush, which you can uh, select by pressing one on the keyboard or the eraser by pressing two on the keyboard. Yeah, so for example, now we've got the eraser selected. I, I'm not able to erase anything yet because I'm not really, I'm not on a layer that has anything on. But if I were to press one on the keyboard, so I've got the uh, brush selected and I would paint across this uh, model over here. Now, if I press two on the keyboard to go on the eraser, then I can just, um, you know, take all those, um, all that texture off that I've just added. Uh, number three on the keyboard is for uh, basically um, the transformations and so, so pro projections, sorry, projections of the textures. These are more advanced options, which we're not going to go through as there's no uh, there's no uh, real point into this for, as as a, as a beginner. Uh, and then the next uh, option is to basically uh, fill the polygons with with a texture. Uh, I'm going to show you how this functions later on when you're using masks, especially, and that's going to be make it very useful. Uh, then you've got the smudge uh, brush, which obviously does the same thing as in if you ever use a, a, a program like Photoshop, it smudges the textures around again by using different variations and, and brushes that you can just up, uh, you know load into the uh, setting. Then we've got the clone stamp tool, which you basically if you hold uh, V on the keyboard and you select one area uh, just like that, you can see I've selected that area. When you try and paint somewhere else, it will try and it will copy that area into your, you know, wherever you're trying to paint. Now this doesn't specifically work right now because you basically need to, um, well, you, you need you need to copy from the same layer. So let's say, uh, let's just go back, to, let's just go to our uh, brush and we're adding some brush strokes over here. 
and then we're going to our um, you know our the sixth option which is the clone and then we'll just select that area and then you can see as I am using this it will basically copy that texture but it has to be on the same layer so it has to be something that this layer has produced before in order to be able to clone stamp it so I'm just going to erase everything that I've added in here um, just so let's just go for some more elements on the interface so for example uh, over here you've got your layers now these uh, windows can be moved wherever you wish to have them so just like in Photoshop you can move uh, most of these things around the way you want them uh, you've got up here the brush size you've got the brush flow uh, stroke capacity spacing and other such options again just like in Photoshop now one thing that I wish to make clear about substance painted uh, while uh, having a, a drawing tablet is quite useful it's not necessary uh, to be able to pull off textures into this because it has so many it's all about procedural mainly so if you want to do any stylized work with a, with a pencil then that's fine you can get a drawing tablet but a lot of these things can just be sort of uh, you know put into the program by using procedural methods uh, the next option here so we've got uh, our pressure profile ease in so this is this is basically if you're using a tablet and then you've got an option here for symmetry for example so if your model is completely symmetrical whatever you do on uh, one side will happen on the other side as well which is quite nice now you've got different symmetry options that you can select from so just play around with these settings like for example you can use the radial one which i find to be quite um, useful um, so for example you can do something like this it really depends on what mesh you're you're, uh, you're working on but i think the radial is quite nice quite an interesting um, uh, ability so control z does exactly what you would expect which is basically undo, undo the, um, the last action over on the bottom we've got our shelf this is what substance painter calls all of its uh, materials and and the textures and hard surfaces and all the tools you'll be using to make your textures so for example you've got in here you've got alphas uh, you've got grunges you've got procedural um, you've got textures brushes as well so now the substance painter is owned by uh, adobe they've now added uh, photoshop brushes to our selection so for example this layer i've got an option over here where it says um, you know the alpha so I could just drag, I don't know, something um, like this, sorry, not in the alpha. Um, uh, what I would need is to basically just double click it and then we'll load it over here in the image input. So that's where you, and then the alpha will change based on that as well. So now I'm basically painting with this brush. Um, I could, you know, add anything in, in there really I don't know why it's not allowing me to drag and drop it normally does but I'm just gonna double click it and it just changes to that texture as you can see so it's quite nice because it just loads these alphas in so you can load that in for example obviously if you want to do stamps then you're gonna have to work with different settings so you know for example it won't allow me to stamp it which is quite unfortunate but then there are options in here that will allow you to do stamps so um, now what we want to do is um, basically uh, look at these options over here. Uh, so we've got a pause engine computation, which is then going to help with um, just just be able to navigate the you know you press the pause button, you now navigate the scene, but it will stop the engine from uh, looking into the you know the textures that you've applied and, and doing any sort of calculations. So what this in theory, you know in, in practicality what it means is if I draw drag in this material over here normally this will start computing and adding it over to the uh, mesh but if i press this button now it will basically allow the engine to update so if i press pause again and for example i delete the uh, layer this will not update until i actually press or you know this uh, button over here now over on the right side we've got a uh, option to see the 3d 2d and 3d option as well so if we press the you know f1 on the keyboard for example then now we can also see the uv map of the actual mesh and then if we press this button over here we can swap between the views just to have them differently placed so that's the uv map and this is the model over here uh, we're just going to go back into our normal view, which is uh, the F2 option to see the 3D model. And then on the other option over here, we've got project, a perspective view or orthographic view, which does the same, you know, what, what you expect. It just puts the model from um, perspective to orthographic and vice versa. Uh, and then the other option here is to go from constrained rotation or free rotation. I've never personally used this, to be honest, but 
you know you can um, you can basically do that as well if you wish to use the object so uh, oh actually yeah it will it will uh, I think if, if you constrain it it won't well I'm not really sure actually I think it just it just sticks you uh, sticks you into one direction but if you go to free rotation it allows you to sort of manipulate the object a bit better I'm not really sure I've not really never used this option to be honest and then the next option is to go into render mode so if you press this button you'll basically start rendering the um, model this opens a, a sort of a new part of the of substance painter um, and in this new part here uh, for example you can select to not show a clear color just to show the background so if you deselect that it will now render with a background in the in at the back um, like that so that's the that's the background that we've got selected uh, I'm just going to close the render as it's clearly crippling my computer since I'm running such a high resolution um, so now we're back into normal view so that's the button over there these panel this uh, drop down menu here allows you to select from the different maps that you have on the model so if you press the you want to see the height map then this will show you the height information this will show you the normal information. This will show you the scattering. You can see it's got some scattering in there. Um, now, if you press M on the keyboard, it will take you back to show material. But if you press B on the keyboard, it will allow you to go through these, uh, basically through these maps, uh, just to toggle between them, basically. And then this first uh, uh, panel here is for the texture set list. So that's basically one texture that we've got. And this will come into play mo more when you actually have more texture sets or UDIMs because you can select which one you want to edit from here. The next panel is basically where you can, ba uh, you, know, you can see your baked maps uh, and what the, the sizes of the, of the baked maps are. Uh, so you can see the baked maps right here. You can also add new maps. So if you press this button, you can add all of these maps in, in here, like for example, a specular map, uh, an emissive map, and so on. Without, if you don't add these, you won't be able to actually use them in your materials. Uh, the next one is the display settings. So you've got things such as what the environment map is. So, so for example, if I select this environment and I turn the opacity on, I can actually see that environment now in my viewport so I can take the blur out and then you know just play with exposure and rotations and all sorts of uh, options in here uh, now I normally do not keep the opacity of the map on just because it will then if I, if I do then it will basically uh, it, that, that will that will trick me into applying new new uh, colors to this uh, because the as I said the overall colors around the uh, viewport will trick me, trick my eye basically. Uh, right, the next option, well, sorry, going down this list, we've got a shadow, so we can deactivate or activate those. Now, shadows obviously take a lot more of uh, the performance uh, on the model, so if you have a very complicated model, turning shadows off may actually help you with the, with working, you know, working on it. Uh, then you've got some uh, camera settings, like the field of view, focal length, and, and you know, then we've got active post effects, so, uh, if you add a glare, uh, which you know in this case we actually had one, uh, then you will see the model sort of shining through. So let's say we bring this over on top, we just bring this material over. Um, so now we've got this sort of you know effect. Um, if we go to its um, actually, I think I may have I don't have an emissive map on this, so it's not really going to shine. Um, so if I open the options over here, you know, this, these would, you can see that luminance where, when I'm bringing it up, you can see that it's making, you know, you, you can see how it's shining basically as I do this. Uh, although I don't have an emissive map, but the actual uh, texture that I've just added does have a lot of, uh, you know, it, it can reflect the light that it com comes on it from the environment basically. You've got, vig you know, the vignette uh, option. You can add uh, anti-aliasing, subsurface scatter scattering. You can work on the, you can, you can work on that. You can also activate the wireframe from here. So let's say we can make the wireframe white, and now you can see the wireframe of the map of the sort of the of the model. And then a channel display. I never actually used this. I don't even know what it does to be honest. I think it's just with HDR and, and such, but I never used it. The next option here is the shader settings, which will then, you know, if you select uh, up here, you can do the uh, ambient occlusion intensity and the quality of it. You can uh, change options such as the emissive intensity. Again, we don't have an emissive map, so there's nothing for it to, 
to uh, trigger. Then we've got things like the subsurface scattering parameters, like for example, the quality of it, the color, and, and so on. Uh, parallax, occlusion map, nobody really uses this as far as I know nowadays, they just go over to the displacement and tessellation. So basically what this does is it adds a, it just adds height to your mesh. So if I actually take that, um, uh, you know, um, luminance down, just because we don't need it, right? And let me just deactivate the wireframe as well, so we can clearly see our mesh. And I will take this, um, oops, sorry. Right, so now we've got our model the way it was before, and I just want to play with the uh, with the height. So I've just increased the height over there. I'm going to make sure that we've got a lot more subdivisions to our model. So this basically adds more subdivisions to the model itself, which is fine. And I want us to basically open one of these folders. Uh, there's nothing really that I can work with. Well, let me just add some Japanese style sets, <laughs> which is basically going to do this to it. Now, this already has height, but if I take height off, you know, if I deactivate the map, you can see that the tile set is on the model, but nothing really happens. Now, if I activate height, you can see how it has literally deformed the texture. If we take the color off, you can see what it's done. So we can still maintain the color of what we've, what we've made already. But, you know, we, we can actually keep the height from the um, tile set. So now I've got the roughness in there as well. The only thing that I'm using is the height of it, and I could probably do the normal as well. You can see it add, adds a bit more variation, but actually I like, I really like it with the roughness, it just gives a bit of a, a nice effect to it. Now with the height over here, as I said, we can play with the subdivisions and increase that. The lower we go, the lower it's gonna, you know, the lower quality is gonna look like. We can then play with the height to really increase it if we want to, but again, that's gonna break the mesh if we're not careful. So I can bring that up here. Can also go over to this uh, scattering option and you can see that I, the more I, I increase this it will add more scattering effect and I can also play with the color on that so for example I could make the scattering effect be this uh, reddish uh, tint which is not exactly well it's not the most uh, it's, uh, it doesn't work the best with, with, with what we've got but again you can you can just play around with it I think scattering is an effect that you want to be um, you know quite um, You want to use it, but you don't want to overdo it then on the display setting over here for scattering um, You can actually play a bit more with the uh, sorry if I can find it um, Yeah, some sort of scattering you can you can do you can play with the count here as well Which will by the way affect your performance quite a lot. So it's all about what the quality uh, you want to achieve with it so that's what these options do. One other thing for the shader, you can also change the shader overall as to what type of shader you want. So for example, if you want to do Dota 2 meshes, you can just load that specific shader. So now you can only see what Dota 2 can handle, basically. Uh, and then this is a history of what you've done and then a log of any errors or anything like that you may get. So that's basically it for the interface. Uh, there's only a couple of menus up here left, like for example, you know, uh, bake ma uh, the settings of the of the program, which again we're not going to go through. Uh, the only thing you need to know is basically you want to have your GPU to be used for this. And if you have any problems with the with the viewport, it looks quite weird. Then just disable the uh, GPU ray tracing if you don't have a ray tracing card, and that should fix your issues. And then other th other things in here are just you know what windows you can see uh, the uh, as I said the, the bake mesh map uh, option which is the most important one I would say and then how to bring your mesh in which we're gonna go through in just a second basically so yeah let's move on to the next uh, stage so now I'm in uh, substance I'm a substance launcher and I just uh, look for this uh, robot uh, you know on the uh, 3d model tab which will basically look at on um, sketchfab and it will you know give you a list of all the models that are free and you can just download and basically we, you know with, with the option in here download and send straight, send straight to substance painter and it will load the file in uh, I'll have a link in the description below for this exact model if you guys want to have a look at it It's quite nice. Uh, I mean with the UV layout and everything is not the most spectacular as you will see in substance uh, painter But uh, you know, it will it will will make do with, with what we've got so 
uh, over in Substance Painter, we'll go into File and we'll click New. Uh, and over here, we want to select the actual mesh. Now we've got two options. I've got the one with no UVs and one that has UVs already on. So we're just going to open the no UVs one because I want you to see how Substance Painter will handle this. Uh, once you've selected it, just make sure you deselect this use UV tile workflow. And then you've got an option here where it says auto UV, you, you know, auto unwrap basically. Uh, once you press that, press on the options and then you've got, uh, you just leave these as they are, recompute all, no margin. But again, if you know what you're doing, you can then switch these options as well. But I would say just keep the options as they are. Once you press OK, oh sorry, before you press OK, just uh, make sure that the document resolution, you set that to whatever suits your purposes. But just bear in mind that you can change this at any point later on in the uh, in, in the file. So it's not really a problem if you keep this at 2K, which I normally do because it just moves a lot quicker for my intended purposes. So once you press OK, then the auto, you know, the auto UV unwrap will start. And this will take a while depending on how big the mesh is. So I'm just going to skip all the way to the end and then we'll resume from uh, there. So now you can see the uh, model, we've got it in here. It's uh, automatically unwrapped by Substance Painter. So if you press F1 on the keyboard, we can see the model and the uh, UV unwrap. As this is what Substance Painter has done automatically for us. And basically uh, it, it took the biggest shapes and tried to uh, you know, balance them out basically, uh, in essence. So if we look at the texture set, you can see that Substance Painter has kept the um, naming of the, the the name of the materials that this mesh had. So so when this mesh was made by by the creator, he named some parts of this mesh uh, as I don't know glass, ground, plast, rivets, as you can see in that in, that, um, in there. And if we base, if we press it over here and we say hide all, then the whole mesh disappears. And if we press the this I here, it will bring back you know uh, one at a time. So this is the ground, this is the whatever that is. Then we've got glass. Then we've got the you know the the, the skeleton, uh, and we've got the armor and and so on. And basically, that's that's how you you bring them all in. But if we want to use the original mesh's uh, UV, uh, which by the way I haven't opened yet, so I don't even know how it looks like. But let's just go to File and press New and then Select. And we'll select this uh, UV one. And we press OK. We just make sure that you've got the Auto Unwrap uh, deselected. Now you can either you know use this, uh, use UV Tile Workflow or you can just leave it without that and just press OK and, and now it will just import uh, the UV as is. And this is what we've got basically. This is how, <laughs> wow, this is, this is quite interesting. This is how it was unwrapped by the original uh, creator. Uh, again, it's really up to him as to what he's done, but I'm pretty sure he's put everything in here basically, uh, in essence. So, uh, if we now take one of the materials, so from down here, we can just select something. Let's say we want to go for this iron uh, iron raw damage, so we're just going to bring it up here. It will now um, cover everything that's in the default material. If we select uh, the other one, we can drop it in and you can see that's what it's doing. And then, you know, if you want to add something for the glass, I don't know, we'll just add this titanium, titanium. So you can see how you can see how basically these are, are added uh, in. Uh, it's not the prettiest um, sort of geometry in terms of in terms of its cleanliness. It's not very clean just because the um, um, well the, the way the UV has been laid out, it won't really allow for for a high um, you know for a high definition uh, model. Um, if we would have used our original model from before, the one that we've auto unwrapped would actually have looked uh, better, but. Let's not fret, let's just go, keep going and see what else we can do uh, with this uh, mesh. So it, it's not necessarily too bad, it's just not really, it's not great. That's the, you know, you can see these sort of artifacts around here. But that's also because we haven't really baked any, ma any maps. So once we do that, I should actually correct some of these issues. So what we'll do is we'll select the, uh, we'll go to edit and then select bake mesh maps. And over in here, we don't have a normal map 
uh, as in as this mesh doesn't really have any definition from a normal map, so we can just use the other maps. Uh, well, well uh, for, for, if, you, if you had a high poly model, then you would use normal maps to basically get the baked details from the high poly to the low poly mesh. But because we don't have that, we can just create new normal maps inside our Substance Painter, which we will do later on. So we'll deselect this one for the time being. You do want your output size to be 4K or, you know, depending on your application, but I normally go for the 4K because then I can downscale that to something else. This is different, by the way, than the option that you found, you can find in here and, and view this document size. This you can change whenever you want and changing it will have a effect. As you can see, it's already made an, a, a, quite an adjustment on our uh, mesh over here. Um, but uh, the other one, the baking, is totally different. You, you bake the maps, you know, uh, with a certain degree of resolution. So I'm just going to go to 4K. So we don't want the normal. We want the world space normal, definitely. The ID map is used if you use the vertex color on your me on your mesh. So let's say in Blender or whatever you've you've uh, painted vertexes, then this. Will be quite useful because once you bake that you can actually select it as a mask inside substance painter and then just mask out details ambient occlusion we all know what this is but basically it, you know it just adds that more realism it just makes objects that are um, close to each other occlude uh, themselves you know occlude with each other the curvature map is what will generate will you will allow most of these textures to work properly because it, it calculates where all the curvatures are on the mesh and then all the details will show through based on that calculation. The position is more like um, you know where all the points of the surface are on the mesh. It's not really uh, and to be honest, I'm not, I haven't really I don't remember using position that much, but but when I use uh, uh, materials and I add masks on them, there are sometimes sliders in relation to the position. So we'll bake that as well. The thickness we don't need to do because this is not a skin surface, this is metal. But normally when you do something like skin, so something that, that allows light to pass through quite fluently, then you want to do thickness. And thickness is also used in tangent with subsurface scattering. So without this, you won't be able to use it. So we'll deselect thickness and we'll do all the other maps. Now, this will take a bit of time to calculate. So we will skip to the, um, you know, to the, to the, the finished part. Uh, some of the other settings you want to do in here, it, these are in case you can't really get the, tech, the um, high poly to properly mesh with this or you, know, you can just play with these settings and, and tweak with them to get the right settings. Uh, I would leave these three options the way they are. Anti-aliasing will help with getting a cleaner, uh, a cleaner result so you can use that but for, this, for our purposes we're not, I'm not going to do that because it's just going to extend the uh, processing time a lot, a lot more, a lot, uh, you know, a lot, uh, will make the time a lot higher. Uh, what we want to do is we can either use this, use low poly mesh as high poly mesh, or we can just press this button to, be, to bring in the, um, you know, the same model because we don't have high poly mesh. So I'm just going to select bake all selected textures. Now this is going to open this new tab here. It will go through all of the meshes and will calculate that. Of course, some of them will go for quite quickly because there's not enough geometry in there for it to look at. Uh, and you can see now, you know, it's, it's doing a main body. So it's just going through curvature, ambient occlusion and all sorts of things. You can see what it's doing. And the moment it finishes, mo you know, all the materials that we've added on this mesh will take into a, it will take a different sort of effect because it's now got some, as I said, some, lot, some calculations to work with. Um, so yeah, uh, to be honest, it's going quite uh, quick. I thought it was going to go, um, you know, uh, slower than, than what it is, but it's, it's doing the meshes, the, you know, the, the maps quite quickly. So it's at 12 out of 35. I'll see you once it uh, finishes. So we now have got the meshes uh, base, uh, you know, done. We've we've added the uh, all the bakes, uh, and I also changed to 4K just to get a bit more resolution now. This is not really working out very well for us just because of how the mesh was unwrapped by the producer. Uh, but uh, again, uh, as I've said before, this is this is what we've got. And if we want to play around with it, uh, again, the, the quality is very low, although the, the map is at 4K. So you would actually you, you would actually get that hit in the performance if you would use it. But let's just drop in the, uh, you know, another another um, uh, texture and we're going to right click it and add a black mask. And then on this black mask, we're going to right click it 
just like in Photoshop, it's identical to Photoshop the way this works, but obviously it's got new options in here. So you can add a generator, which is the, one of the most powerful tools in Substance Painter. So with this generator, if we click it and we select, I don't know, uh, dirt, for example, then it will um, apply this, it will take the dirt and will calculate it based on the maps that we've, um, you know, we've added. So, you know, we can, we can play with the dirt level, for example, and then the contrast as well. And you can see where it's being applied as we play around with these sliders. But because the mesh is in this state, like this, then it will look at every little thing in here and, and it, will, it will add the dirt on top of it and it won't really calculate it properly just because of how the, the mesh was unwrapped. But if we, for example, if we select a different generator like a metal edge, this should apply that material onto the edges. But if we play with a wear level, you can see that it's actually been applied in many other places, not just the edges, because it doesn't really know what it's doing because of uh, this, <laughs> basically. But again, the, the, um, you know, the person who's made this mesh He's not, he wasn't really looking at uh, providing us with a mesh that's got a you know, nice UV. He was just providing us the mesh and now you, you, know, you can toy around with it. But one of the things that I want us to, to really understand is if, we, if I go to, um, if, I, if I basically um, so get the mesh back up to auto unwrap, so I just go to file, um, you know, file new, and then I use the you know, auto unwrap function, and I press this button over here, if I actually uh, press this button, preserve UV tile layout per material, and enable painting across tiles, this will create UDINs automatically from the materials that we've got. So it will take the, the, uh, all the texture sets that we've got, so the ones from here, and it will create them as UDIMs automatically for us, which is very powerful. I mean, you guys have no idea how powerful this is, how easy it is. You can like make this mesh in Blender, for example, and, and just create material IDs uh, based on what, however you want to separate them. And then you just come in here and use the auto unwrap function plus UDIMs, and then you now literally create a very, very good mesh with, uh, with, with quite decent uh, topology on UV, sorry, with quite decent UVs in order to texture it. So I'm just going to do that and I'm going to bake the mesh maps and we're just going to go back into the, you know, we're just going to come back to uh, to the video after this. You guys can just, you've already done this before, so you can do it again. Um, again, as I said, just use, just use the auto unwrap function from here and then bake the mesh maps just like we did before. And that's about it really. Uh, so I'll see you guys in just a bit. Okay, so we've now got the uh, mesh um, auto unwrap with um, Substance Painter and just like in the previous sort of uh, attempt, this is what Substance Painter has got for us. So all these little parts here that you can see is what Substance sort of looked into and realized by, by proportions uh, which object should be larger than which one. So it's got quite a, an interesting uh, sort of, um, um, uh, you know, um, rule set as to as to how it unwraps the, the the mesh but already if we drop in a material on top of this now so let's just take the same material that we used before the iron raw um, damaged and then you can see now we've got a higher crispier look than what we did before and we don't we don't have those issues with the edges that you saw in the previous um, on the previous model so uh, because just the UV is a lot larger, obviously, and that's what makes it work so well. Uh, I'm still working on 2K, but if I move over to 4K, you can see that it, it can get even better, uh, you know, even better results, basically. Uh, but we're just gonna stay in 2K for now, uh, because the difference is not that, you know, that extensive. But at this point, I think it's now time to talk about, um, you know, adding masks, which is very, you know, a very powerful tool in Substance Painter. One thing to do to take note is that we do have all of our, uh, you know, maps baked apart from a normal map because we don't have any normal information. But we do have our world space, ID, ambient occlusion, curvature and position. And that, that will allow us to work with the masks quite well. So just to you know just to do some uh, just to do some effects here i'm just gonna look for uh let's just have a look maybe maybe do like a steel let me just look for the type of steel material 
So steel roof, for example, now that's not gonna look very, very good actually. Oh, I, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna drop the steel roof un, underneath. And in case you haven't noticed, there is a sort of a change that has happened, although this layer is underneath this layer. So what that, you know, that, that sort of behavior happens because the steel roof has a normal which sticks out through the through this layer because it doesn't have a normal any normal information on top. So if we add the normal information, and now we basically have to put information of normal information on the iron rod damage on top of the steel roof. If we take the normal out of the steel roof, you can still see a change, and that's because they both combine. So the height information, which height and normal are in essence sort of the same sort of well, they've got the same principle they are both uh, normal information to you know in a, uh, to, well that, that's that's basically what it's called it's still normal information even that so um what we can do is if we take the iron rod damage then we go up here this is a very important trick that i'm gonna, about to show you if you select the base color and you change the norm, the layer sort of, um, um, you know, the, 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 the layer um, blending mode, and you change it to a pass through, and then you select metallic and you do the same thing, you say uh, pass through. Actually, sorry, no, it's replace, not pass through. So base color, metallic, all of that, we just say replace. Then we go to roughness and we say again replace. Now when we go to normal and we do the same thing, replace, you can see that already the normal underneath, although we haven't deactivated it, is no longer taking any effect. Now if we go on to height and we do the same thing and we say replace, obviously there was no uh, height on this, but if we added, sorry, it doesn't have any height information, so it wouldn't really matter. But in essence, what we've done now is this layer underneath doesn't give any sort of output above unless we mask the above layer. So I'm going to right click it and then add a black mask. And with the black mask added, I can now right click the mask as well, because obviously with the mask uh, on, just, just selected, purely selected, you can see that it's hidden the actual iron raw damage. But with the mask selected, we can actually paint. So I'm actually, I'm painting the, I'm painting that iron raw damaged into the mesh. And by doing so, I'm also adding normal information. As you can see, that that there, you know, that information over there. Even if I go and take the height out, there is still normal information that I've added to the um, to the texture. So you can see the height of this of this mesh is actually lower uh, than where the steel where, where the steel roof is uh, at the minute. So I can just you know I'll, I'll delete that. I'll erase that by using my eraser by pressing number two on the keyboard. One other thing to take note is you can also change the projection style of these. So for example, if we take a steel roof and we change from UV projection to a triplanar tri projection, this is going to help out a lot more with unifying how the texture sort of goes around here based on where, where the, it, it works best with UDIMs, but it works okay even with the texture sets that we've got. So we're currently working on the default texture set, as you can see. So now with the mask selected, I'm gonna right click it and I'm gonna add a generator. And in the generator, I can select over here what type of a generator I want or I can build my own generator. But we're just gonna use the preset generators that we have. And we're going to select the metal edge. And what this will do is basically it will add um, the iron rod damage will start showing up on our mesh uh, through the edges. Is what's happening and you can see it over here so if we actually increase the wear level you can see that wherever it's detected an edge it will start bringing that sort of detail in uh, or we can change to maybe let's say dirt and again wherever where, wherever you know it's just working on a procedural sort of gener generated uh, information so you can just play with these settings there's all sorts of uh, settings in here now it's very important that you know the steel roof now is on triplanar, so we put that into UV projection, um, just to have them both the same. You can now play, as I say, play around with these settings and really you know bring in more detail. So so if I take the um, iron and just make it, I don't know, yeah, let's let's just go for a blue tint, something like that. So if we do something, you can see where you can see where the dirt is being applied. 
just by looking for the color really. So again, we can just select that generated and we can tone down on the actual contrast and the information that we're seeing. So you can see the contrast is just making, it's just re re removing the um, sort of the smoothness of this. Um, another thing that we could do here, we could just change to maybe curvature. So that's going to use the curvature information to put the, you know, to, to add the um, iron rod damaged. Um, you can see what's happening as I pull these, this information. Again, it's very important that you, you play around with these settings until you get the, the sort of the effect that you want. So well, let's just say we've, we've textured the, the outer layer of this. Now we want to do the, this skeleton in here. So with the skeleton selected, I've just selected this texture set. We can now drop another texture. Obviously you can drop whatever you want. You know, I've just dropped something very random in here, which obviously is not gonna look very good, but you can drop anything in here. I've got some stylized textures and all sorts of things. Um, so let's just try gold pure. So now we've got a golden sort of layer inside there as well. Uh, you can see how that looks like. Um, it's, it's very, it's very, un, I would say very, yeah, well, yeah, very pure. <laughs> um, so is this the sort of, you know, if this is the sort of the color, the texture that we want to go for, then that's, that's fine. I've just added something else. See, I actually like this more and I can actually change it to, you know, this texture, I can change it to maybe snow covered <laughs> it's obviously a texture that's not meant for this but you can experiment with whatever you want whatever you wish um yeah or you can also go in smart material which is basically which in in, in essence will generate uh, effects um that you would normally would just have to create so i've got one here a golden armor i can add that Okay, so you can see what's been done over there. Um, yeah, let's say it's okay. One thing that you can also do is, um, one second, uh, you can select the glass. So the glass would be this thing over here. And then we can add a uh, glass visor. And now it's obviously added that, which will reflect whatever environment we have in the scene. So we've got that. Uh, with the environment. By the way, these smart materials are made into folders because there's, they are a combination of different la different uh, layers put together. Uh, very important that you experiment with these uh, as much as possible. So again, you, you've got in here, you've got settings like the metallicness of the, of the layer, um, the roughness of it as well. So obviously the less rough it is, the more reflective it will get. So you can do something like that, maybe. The height information has no effect really here. There's no real height in the texture itself. So we can just play a little bit with the settings, maybe go for something like, well, actually, we, you know what? We can just probably go with a, a red, something like that. By the way, you also have a color picker and this color picker can work from anywhere in the scene. You can sample a, a color even from your desktop if you want to. So that's quite neat, quite a neat, a neat little thing. So I've just used the color picker to select that color and this is what I've got for the visor. So yeah, I know, very, very original. Um, the ground, we can also texture the ground. So we can add something there as well. We'll do that in a second. So with the ground selected, we can now add some more textures on. So I'm just gonna use this, uh, well, this rock wall from here, or actually let's just use this rock desert texture that I've got. Uh, by the way, you can get all of these textures off of uh, the Substance Launcher. So uh, as long as you have a subscription paid and you've got um, asset points to actually get from Substance Launcher, then you can download all these textures from there for free. So now I've got this um, this uh, rock texture on, but it's very, I should, I should say, it's probably very um, uh, boring as well. So I'm going to drop a uh, moss layer on top of it as well, which obviously is going to cover the whole um, the, well the whole uh, texture with moss which is not you know it's not exactly what we want but actually i'm going to use the moss ball which i think just looks a bit better than that so you can see what what has happened here with this uh now some neat now let's let's start doing some neat things to this so i'm just going to go in my shader editor and then i'm going to go to you know i'm down here where the height information is I'm going to bump that up to maybe, let's say, 0 0.3 or something like that. 
and just increase the subdivision count, uh, make it a bit higher so I get more geometry over here to work with. Just make sure that you don't increase this too much. As you can see, it, it creates certain uh, problems here in the texture, so you gotta be careful with that. And uh, this is more advanced for more advanced users, but um, I think it's very important that you start looking into this as well, which is a very interesting workflow. You can actually modify the geometry of the of the mesh and then you can export it as a substance uh, painter and then you can use it in something like uh, blender or z or z uh, zbrush to project those details into a lower uh, polygon uh, or low poly model so we've got the moss that's covering the whole desert if i deactivate the moss this is how the desert looks like over here so if i put the height on you can see now that i'm getting height information from this desert as well so if I go into technical parameters where I've got height information, I can just increase these things and just really, you know, it's already extended. So how do you how do you actually increase the height of this layer without going in here any further and breaking the texture? Um, you know, that, that's a very important thing to be able to do. So I'm just going to make sure that this is set to something like zero point. Well, actually, oh, sorry, I'm not on that, I'm not on that layer anymore. <laughs> Got to make sure that I'm, the, I'm on the right texture set. So now I'm on the ground, which is good. You can just click these and I think they just, um, you know, change as well. So uh, back into the shader editor, I want to be at a 0 0.2, yeah? And I'm just going to take that moss ball off. But how do we actually get this to, to increase even further than what it is right now? So one thing that we can do is we can right click it and then add levels. And in the levels tab we can select the height and then we can just drag these sliders along and that will allow us to edit the uh, height information of the texture even further so if we, if we do something like this you can see how I'm, I'm just pulling that information upwards so again it's all about experimenting all these layers have different properties and each of them will work differently um, but yeah oh sorry I didn't mean to do that so yeah, you can see now that we've got some more height in there, but also we've got this moss ball uh, on top, which is all, which is also being affected by the height information from underneath. Uh, so if we select the boss uh, the moss ball and we right click it and add a black mask, uh, we don't want to add um, a generator because a generator isn't really going to do a lot of work here. So if we do a generator and we do something like this. You can see that it's just not looking right unless you're going for a more grassy look or something like that but what we want to do is we want to delete the generator and we add, want to add a compare mask what the compare mask does is basically looking at this layer and the layer beneath and it just compares the height information from both layers so you can try and smooth them out so i'm just going to smooth the transition out like that Already you can see that it just adds a bit more variety and richness to the texture. So now we can just go um, over in here on the moss ball and its technical parameters and I can actually play around with the with the height information which will then push in or put uh, you know push out or push in the the, the the texture or I can play with the levels of the actual rock and as you can see the more I play with these the more um, the moss ball and, and everything underneath just changes. Uh, again, we can add a levels information over to the moss ball, change that to height, and then we can just play with these settings as well. Um, I know there's a very cool video from sub, from Substance Painter where they basically uh, make the grass sort of grow. Um, so if you actually want to do something like that, um, you can go over in here and then add a paint, I believe it was. And then go to particles and select rain. Now let's just see if it works. Um, no, not really, it only works for the areas. Well, I know, what I, I know what I need to do. I just need to get the, I'll, del I'll delete the, I'll delete the um, uh, what do you call it, the mask. So just remove mask and then Remove this paint, add a black mask, a simple black mask, and now with the paint, with a with a rain um, particle effect selected, I can just sort of, 
well, I'm trying to rain down the effect on top of this. Um, hmm. I think it's because of the levels of this. So if I go through here and then just go on my mask, I'm not really sure why it's not allowing it to grow. Normally it shouldn't happen. So the reason it wasn't working is because I was using an eraser rather than a brush. So now back onto the brush, we'll select the particle, the rain. Just make sure you make it a bit bigger as well. So as the rain falls, so does the moss appear, as you can see. But because this is not a flat terrain, then it will just um, sort of, you know, it will, it will create this sort of, uh, well, effect where, where, where it's just running around, basically. Uh, yeah, puddle isn't gonna work. Uh, you you can select all sorts of things in here, so or, you know you can you can just make some really big particles and so on if you want to pay if you want to really paint with with uh, particles. But I think adding a compare mask is really uh, one of the best effects that you can actually do. So just make sure on the level side of things, you play around with the settings to really bring that moss in. Uh, maybe not like that. Yeah, no, not really. It, it's really. As I said, it's really important that you work with these settings until you get the right approach to this. Um, yeah, maybe something like that. And then we'll just select this, add the levels over to the rock itself, and just play around with the setting. Maybe do something like that. Yeah, something like that. That's That's quite okay. So we've got a very, you know, a, a big contrast here, moss and, and desert, but we can select the moss ball and we can change the color to maybe something like autumn moss, which will make it look a bit, well, red as you can see, or spring wet moss. No, that's not going to work out, is it? Winter lichen. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that looks nice. Okay, so you can see now that we just added some uh, extra, you know, some variations in there. We've got a mech over here. Um, let's just go back to the mech itself. So I'm just going to select the this um, part over here, and we want to, for example, we want to add more information, like for example, add a paint layer. So just click this uh, button over here, which has a paint layer, and we can go to our brushes, and you know you can start, uh, as I said, painting um, different different decals, details. I mean, you can you can switch over to uh, something like an alpha. Uh, so once the shelf loads them, for some reason it's not loading them very quickly for me. Uh, but if you select one, you can see that with these, you can just add decals on the, um, you know, on here, uh, all sorts of decals that you can add. And all of these could also have information such as uh, normal height and, and so on. So if you increase the height of the, of the paint, you can see that now that's adding height and and or, or you know you can you can play with the um, well the height is mainly what you're playing with uh, but you can also add this information into the normal um, but it's not it's not a um, you know for example you can select the a normal in here um, sorry did I say, uh, yeah so that that will you know that that will basically add that normal effect so if we deactivate it actually uh, one of the re one of the things to, to note about the the paint layer is that once you apply the texture you can not really modify it on the paint layer so that's why a fill layer is a lot better than doing for doing this so in so in, in essence to get a, uh, a fill layer you've got an option over here which says add a fill layer and the fill layer will occupy everything so you will go on top of everything else but it doesn't have any information yet apart from a base color really so whatever you do to this uh, in, in this fill layer so that that means uh, you know for example loading a normal in here so i've just loaded some random normal uh, i don't know something like that or maybe do something like this like this pattern and again you can just play around with these settings on the pattern uh, you know increase the feed you can do all whatever all, all sorts of settings the height you can also add information uh, one of the things that we want to do is go to shader editor and just turn the height to zero 
So then we only get, we don't actually get structural deformation. We only get some, you know, um, we only get the effect visually, uh, sorry, but the geometry is not being affected. This won't affect the height information that we've added on the, um, well, it will affect the height information, sorry, on everything really, including the ground. Um, so now that we've got the, this pattern sorted, what we can do um, is we can pl play with the scale on it. So we can go for something like that. Maybe change the color to, um, I don't know, um, a green like that, which looks like a sort of a chameleon. Quite, quite ugly, I must say. Uh, we can also make it more metallic or, or less or increase the roughness. You know, all sorts of these, all, all sorts of settings we can change here. And now that we've got this fill layer sorted, we can add a black mask. And with the black mask added, we can now go maybe into a brush, like, um, I don't know, whatever brush you want. And you can just go in here and, and paint these panels, for example. Uh, symmetry is not going to do very well over here because the, the mesh is not symmetrically aligned. You can see on the right side where it's applied the texture and we can actually paint on this end as well. So you can obviously see that it, because of the, uh, the way UVs are, it's going to be, it's going to make it quite difficult to paint on, on certain panels only. But there is luckily a, a work around that, which is an option that I've showed you guys earlier, which is the polygon fill. So once you select that, It'll, it gives you a few options, like for example, the one it's triangle fill, so you can just select triangles for it to fill for you, or you can select um, a, a polygon fill, which kind of does the same thing what the triangle fill does. Uh, and then you've got mesh fill. If you click it, it will just fill the, the mesh, the, the different meshes that you've got in here. So it will select them, the, um, as I said, meshes. But what, what if one mesh you know, it's spread, um, it, it, or what if you have um, multiple UV tiles from the same mesh? Well, that's where the next option comes in, which is UV chunk fill. So that's what it's, I think, I'm pretty sure, yeah, UV chunk fill. So you can just press a UV uh, island that you have and it only applies the texture on that UV island. Uh, once you exit the mask, this is what you get. You get these individual panels that are now painted you know, very cr uh, crispy, very crystal clear. Um, if we switch to 4K again, just to have a look at the details, um, this is what we got so far. So you can clearly see there will be a, tri there will be a difference between 2K and 4K. Um, not tremendously enough because, as I said, the UVs are, well, there's no real handmade optimization here. Uh, but it's still good enough. So we go back to 2K, you can see the detail has been lost um, in this uh, instance. Um, so, you know, we've, let's say we just textured our uh, model. We've done the default, uh, you know, material. We can't really rename it to Substance Painter. You need to do that in your actual 3D software if you want to rename it. Uh, but let's say we've actually, uh, you know, let's say we really like our ground, for example, and we like our ground with this height. Yeah, so in that respect, you can now go over here to file and you've got an option where it says export mesh. So you've got an option without displacement or tessellation or with displacement tessellation. So if you click that, it will export this mesh with these settings from here, which basically what it means is it calculate, recalculates what geometry it would require to in order for your mesh to look like this, wherever you export it. But bear in mind, it will export it with all these sort of glitches that you may have in here, like for example, you know these sort of um, these holes that have been created now because the because where where the UVs are. Uh, one thing to do when you take it to your own three D program, when you take this as a as a as a mesh, uh, you put into your three D program as a you know as I said a, a a high poly mesh, but you can also then project that information into a low poly mesh, and then the textures that you export for this, you can apply them to your new low poly mesh with the details from here and they will match up perfectly. So that's a very interesting workflow, which I've got another video where that is explained uh, a lot, you know, in a deep in a, a deep dive on how to do that. So yeah, we made one ugly robot, obviously, uh, because I've just added the height information in here, it just made these go up as well. Um, if you want, you can like, um, you can actually select um, this texture set and with the fill layer selected, you can just take the height off. 
one of the one of the advantages of doing it as a fill layer is that you can like go to a paint you know you can have a paint a paint uh, uh, sorry not a paint layer you can select the mask and you can add a paint uh, effect on it and with the paint selected you can go to a brush and then you can actually wipe that information and as you can see I'm actually blending that a lot better now with the with the actual uh, robot which doesn't look that bad to be honest uh, and this is why I said to you guys you won't need a pen to do any of this I'm not, you know whatever I've done here I'm not really I've not used a stylus or anything like that I've just used a um, I've just used a mouse uh, Substance Painter is quite resource intensive uh, they have done some work on improving its performance but it will still kill your um, you know it will definitely kill your performance as you go along with it um, so yeah that's that's basically it for the um, for how to texture and how to use some of these layers there are a lot of other options in here the black uh, mask has things such as uh, you know filters so for example you can add a filter to say you know you want your um, you know sort of converting your height to normal which won't really do much here because you don't have any height to convert to normal but you can work on adding filters like this the high pass filter which then you know you've got some settings in here which are not really affecting anything at the minute but again uh, these you you'll have to experiment with these to see what they all do but there are some interesting effects down here like for example the um, um, Wax, why is it not applying it? Hmm, interesting. I'm just gonna take that off. Let me just delete this because I, I need a proper layer here, a proper material. So I'm just gonna go over, uh, maybe add a, you know, this foil type of, uh, of material, which obviously is going to encase the whole uh, mesh into it. Um, and now add a filter. Let's just add a filter and do, um, so, you know this effect which is a mask FX watercolor sort of um, effect uh, or you can change it to something else maybe this which makes it look like it's wet uh, gotta take that height down to zero again so we just made the material look like it's wet and again you've got a lot of options in here like increasing the amount of drops and, and so on and how they drop and where they go and <laughs> honestly we've got so many options in here um maybe this one peeling paint effect i'm not really seeing the i'm not really seeing the peel but let's just try yeah see that that's now peeling away at the material that we've added so that's quite interesting you can add some air bubbles on it as well so all sorts of things but and substance paint that gets updated with these kind of things all the time um so that's sort of our texture over there um yeah something like that I'm just gonna add some more uh, you know I can add some more details to it if I wanted to uh, like I said I've got plenty of textures in here or I can go on the substance uh, launcher and then over here I've got an option called uh, substance source and in substance source I can get you know all these textures as long as I've got credits to download them and you know I get textures from here every time I use my pro I do new projects because there's loads of uh, textures in here to use um, okay, so now let's just move on to how to export. So now that we have our uh, texture, let's say, completed based on whatever you were looking for to do, uh, you know, I've added some more details to it. I've not really done much. I've just added some basic texturing onto this robot just to prove a point, basically. Uh, as you can see, there's uh, still a lot more work to be done on it, but I would say it's quite, you know, it's looking decent enough. If we change to uh, 4K just to be able to see the details a lot better, again, with a proper UV, this would look a lot better. Substance Painter does uh, a good enough job for you to be able to start texturing straight away, but it's definitely not perfect. Uh, this is what we got with the 4K texture, and this is how it will look like when we export it. Uh, so I'm just putting it back to 2K just to ensure that I'm not gonna have any crashes or anything like that. So if we go to, fi to File and we have the Export Textures option, uh, Control Shift E on the keyboard, uh, when you've uh, come to this uh, sort of this point here, you've got some output templates that you can select from. So in Settings, you you know you check you check where you want the textures to go to, uh, what sort of template to use. So 
one of these from here. Um, what sort of, um, you know, what, what sort of uh, file type you want to export, what's the resolution that you prefer. Uh, you know, if you say based on each texture set size, and that will be 2K, but if we want to override it to 4K, for example, that's fine. You can even click these individually and change what the output is going to be like. So every one of these materials can be changed to something else. Um, I never actually play with this around, just always leave it to dilation infinite. I think that works best, but depending on the application you're bringing it in, you may actually want to change the settings on this. Um, and then once you've you know, done all these, all these settings, you can press export and all your textures will go there, but uh, you do need a proper sort of template. Now, a lot of these come already made up with Substance Painter, so things like, um, you know, Arnold or Dota or CryEngine or things like that. But um, for Blender, for example, you may want to create your own sort of version. And I've got one here for Blender and Marmoset, or I've got one for Blender and Marmoset in the UDIM uh, setup. Um, so I'm just going to show you how to, how to quickly do one. I do have a video that you guys can watch on my channel. It's a very short video, about one minute long, in which it shows you exactly how to make uh, this setup. But I'm just going to go through one very quickly. Uh, list of exports just tells you exactly what's going to be exported. So on the output template, we can just click the plus button and we've got a new uh, preset. You can double click it here to rename it. So let's just rename it to test. And then you want to start off with adding something like a base color channel. So uh, the base color, you can't drag it in unless you've actually created an output map. So base color will be done out of a, an RGB map. So that's done there. I can just drag in the um, RGB or we can say RGB from the RGB channels. Uh, you can select how many bits and what the extension should be of what's being generated. Um, and then you've got this sort of the naming convention of this. Now, if you look on my Blender Marmoset one, I start off with the mesh name, uh, name of the actual layer of what I'm doing. So in this case, a base color, and then uh, dollar sign texture set. So what, what, this, what this will translate to, it will say, uh, in this scenario, we'll say mech tutorial, you know, whatever the name of the mesh was, tutorial mech or whatever it was, underscore base color, alpha underscore, and it will just say what sort of texture set we're looking at. So in this instance, it will be default 01, default 01, uh, well, they, they seem the same, but they're, they're different. <laughs> uh, glass, ground, material, plast, and rivet. So that, that will be the, the name. So when we go over here, uh, we can just delete that. We can press the dollar sign and we've got a list of options to choose from. So if we say mesh, then that will put the mesh automatically in there. We can do an underscore and just say base color. I would definitely use underscore every time. It just makes things a lot easier. And then press the dollar sign and you can just say texture set, for example. And that's pretty much the same layout as the other one that we saw before. Um, then you may want to do, I don't know, um, let's say an ambient occlusion. So you can press um, this, you can do a gray map. Um, so let's just say, again, dollar sign mesh. Sorry. Um, now I've got to delete this. You can also type it in, but again, you know, it's all about convenience. And AO, I'm just going to type in AO underscore, and you can do dollar texture set, which will then give me the texture set. And I can go over here and just drag in the ambient occlusion and just, I want to see the information from the alpha channel and that should be fine. Well, actually, sorry, we can do it from the gray channel and it'll be fine. And uh, for uh, the normal, for Blender, for example, you do want to use um, the uh, normal OpenGL. So uh, when you go over here, you can just do RGB. Yeah. And I would definitely drag in the normal OpenGL and you can just say RGB channels. And that will, you know, if I go over in here, just to have a look at how I've done it, it's pretty much the same sort of setting that I've done and it works perfectly because Blender does work with OpenGL, not normal DirectX. So once you've done, you know, all of these settings in here, if you go over, over on the template side of things, you can actually select the last one you've made, so that will be test. And if you go on the list of exports, this is what's going to be uh, exported based on what whatever you put in the texture set. Uh, once that's done, you can just press the export button. Um, so actually, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this, um, you know, this path, 
and then let me just do it in 2k not 4k and I want to only export default one so just that one uh, and you just press export and then this will pop up in here which will then say that all of the textures have been exported open output directory and uh, there it is that's that's our that's our mech basically that's that's for the base that's for the that, that's what we generated the normal map a base color and an ambient occlusion and that was uh, generated just from the first um, texture from the first texture set because that's the only one that we selected that we wanted to do from this list so that's how you you know do textures in substance painter overall there's a lot of experimentation in here there are so many different options i mean there are people who are painting only with height on these and then exporting high poly meshes out of here you can do so many things in substance paint that it's unreal actually how diverse it is uh, and now with the udim uh, sort of approach you can you know the sky is the limit really on these things uh, texture sets and all that are now becoming more of a uh, a legacy thing so everybody's going to start using udims very soon just because it allows you to put so much more detail into a mesh than what you are doing right now so i hope you guys found this tutorial um useful uh, i hope it's uh, it will help you into uh, launching yourself into substance painter if you have any questions leave uh, leave comments in the section below you can um, you can you can find me there i always respond very quickly and i'm very you know on 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 the on on everyone's sort of uh, well, I want to help everybody basically. So, if you, as I said, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, a comment, and subscribe to my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. If you want to support me, just have a look in the description below, and you can go through there if you want to. Um, I also got some. I'm putting some courses up on Gumroad if you guys want to download any of them. So, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you.